Hello, I'm going to go over the answers to the 11.1 to 11.3 quiz pretty quickly. So here we go. First section with some vocab asked you about direct and inverse variation equations. A direct variation equation is an equation of the form y equals kx, where k is some constant. It could be any number you like, 4. As x gets bigger, you're going to multiply by 4, and y will therefore also get bigger. Direct meaning as whatever x does, y will also do the same. As x gets bigger, y will get bigger. In an inverse equation, variation equation, it's the opposite. The form of the equation is k divided by x. k could be any number you'd like. Uh, 12 divided by x. If this was the equation, as x is getting bigger, you're dividing by a larger and larger number. That'll make the entire fraction smaller. So as x gets bigger, y does the opposite. y gets smaller. Question number three asks you about setting up either an inverse or a direct variation equation. There's two ways to do this. The first way needs you to recognize that this is an inverse variation equation. Uh, what is this? Time and speed. Those are inversely related. As you go faster, the time to get in between two points is going to be less time. So in this case, x is going to be speed, the thing that you can most directly control. So speed. Therefore, y must be time. If you set up the equation, it would be y equals k divided by x. You use the first scenario of 150 minutes and 60 miles per hour. to solve for k. When you multiply 60 by 150 to solve for k, I believe you get 9,000. Then use that to write your equation, and then you can use this equation to solve for any scenario that involves uh, these two cities. If you put 75 miles per hour in for x and divide, you should end up getting 120, and this is measuring minutes so 120 minutes you should use a little bit of common sense too and know hey think about this you're going to go faster it needs to take less time that means it's not going to be one of those two it's got to either be 120 or 75. technique number two is you can use proportions it's just when you're using proportions the items that come from the same story have to be diagonal from one another so if this is 150 minutes 60 miles per hour needs to go here most people would then place 75 here x here, and then you solve using cross product property, you're going to get the same answer. Problem number two asks you about a direct variation. This is a direct because if you have more fence to paint, it's going to take you more time. So as time or as feet increases, time increases. Feet could be x in this case. y would then be most likely time. First method is to solve using an equation y equals kx. Uh, so it would be what? 150 equals k times 60. If you divide 150 by 60, you're going to get 2.5 equals k. Then use 2.5 to write the general equation for this situation. Put 75 in for x, and you're going to get 187.5 minutes. That should make sense. If you have more fence to paint, it needs to take more time. So that tells you it can't be one of these first two. It's got to be one of the last ones. So 187.5. Second technique is you could use proportions again. But this time, the numbers that come from the same setup, the same story, need to be across from one another. So 150 and 60. You could even put the 60 here if you'd like to. But they just cannot be diagonal from one another. If feet go on this side, though, then feet need to be here x goes here, and if you solve using cross product property, you're going to get 187.5 again. Next section, 11.2 with some vocab. The first one was about the excluded value of a rational expression. A rational expression, here's an example of one, 1 over x minus 3. The excluded values are the values for x that I cannot pick. I would need to exclude them if I were making a table. And the value I cannot pick for x is 3. If I put 3 in for x, I would have 1 divided by 0. And that is undefined. So it's the value that makes the denominator be 0 because I cannot divide by 0. It makes undefined statements. So the uh, first one is denominator. Um, this is a couple of you put output. The values that make the output be zero, we have a name for that. It's the zeros. It's not the excluded value, though. 
next one was some graphs. What's the horizontal asymptote? Well, the horizontal asymptote is obviously the one that should be horizontal. That would be this one. That goes through y of 4, so this is the equation y equals 4. So it is that option. Next one asked about the vertical asymptote of a rational function. The vertical one is this one right here. It's going through x equals 3. It's a vertical line, so it has to be x equation, so it's got to be x equals 3. Next one asked you what's the equation for this graph. Well, you can see the origin for the parent function. So the parent function we graphed in class, it looks like that. Its asymptotes are the axis for y and x, so the origin is where those cross. This one's been shifted right 3 up 4, so it's kind of like a Bruin point slope past 3 up 4. That's why it's actually going to end up being this one. Another way you could think about it is note, I can't pick x equaling 3 because there's a vertical asymptote there. That's what tells you it has to be one of these two because there's a vertical asymptote at 3 reminding you that you can't pick 3 for x. So it's got to be one of those, and then it needs to move up 4, so it has to be the last one. You could also use your graphing calculator. If you typed in the equation 1 divided by x minus 3 plus 4, put parentheses around your numerator and denominator and hit graph, you would see the corresponding correct graph. And I believe that was the end of 11.2. 11.3 was on finding excluded values and zeros. So state the excluded values. You need to factor first in order to see what all of the items really are. The top is already a factored expression of x plus 5. The bottom, what numbers multiply to be negative 9 and add up to be 8? That's going to be plus 9 and minus 1. And what values for x can I cannot pick? If I were making a table, they'd be negative 9 and positive 1. So those are going to be the excluded values because it would make the bottom be 0. Is this the last question? It is. Okay, so it's asking about the zeros of the function. The zeros are the x values that make the output be 0 while not also making uh, the denominator be 0. So the first thing you should do is, is simplify. So factor the whole top part because the bottom is already uh, factored. I need numbers that multiply to be negative 18, add up to be 6. We've had lots and lots of practice with this by now, so you should get x plus 6, x minus 3. The bottom is x minus 3. You're going to see then that these will simplify out, make 1. So this actually just simplifies to the equation x plus 6. So the first step is simplify. It can't be one of these because this can be simplified, so it's got to be one of these. And then it's asking you which one's the 0. The 0 is the x value that makes the output be 0. So what would make this thing be 0? Well, hopefully you can see what would make this thing be 0. It would be 0 if you solved by subtracting 6 if x equaled negative 6. So that's why it's this one. The x equals 3 is the excluded value, but it's not the 0 because it would make the bottom be 0, and you can't divide by 0. So that's why there's only one 0 in this case. And that's it. Thank you very much. Hope that this overview helped you understand the questions that you might have missed.